Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com, and in this video, we are going to set up our player object for Pocket Droids Go. With the power of the Mapbox SDK, it's actually pretty easy to get a player up and running with location providers based on the user's GPS and their mobile device. So let's hop right in and get that done. Step one is going to be we're going to remove this player object, and that would be this cube and sphere. So we're just going to delete that, but before I do, just take notice there are two scripts here that we're going to need to use. There's immediate position with location provider and rotate with location provider. Granted, the rotate script isn't required, but it is pretty cool. So we're going to use it. So let's go ahead and delete this player and continue to break the prefab. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go and open up in the assets that are provided. We're going to open up the Unity and this prefabs folder. And we're going to go ahead and drag the player into our models folder. So let's import that. And then we're going to dive in. And we're just going to go ahead and grab the prefab out of that of player. And we're going to drop him on the screen and change its position to 0, 0, 0. And then we'll go ahead and drag it into the location based game. The next thing we're going to want to do is drag the camera onto the player as well. Because we want our camera to be following our player at all times. And then we need to go and add those two scripts before we can forget to our player. So we'll just click on it and we will say add component. And I'm just going to type in immediate if I can spell it correctly. And add that script. And then we're going to add the rotate with location provider script. And you'll notice there are a few different scripts that Mapbox gives us for use. Um, we've got the rotate on Y target transform and the drag rotate as well. Um, both of those have their uses, but for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and use the rotate with location provider. And in the original, the rotation follow factor was set to two. So I'm just going to put that back. And that's it. We now have our player set up with location providers. How cool is that? And what's a location provider, you ask? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. So this location provider prefab has a few different awesome tools associated with it. And these are provided by Mapbox to us for our use. And each of these four different types of location providers have very different purposes. So let's walk through them one by one real quick. The device location provider is there to obviously give us the location of the device. It's the user's actual GPS coordinates that are coming from whatever device they're using. So like a mobile phone, for example. The editor is there for us to use during testing. Um, it's mostly a testing tool, and it's there so that we can hard code, so that we can provide latitudes and longitudes to check stuff without having to take our phone and actually go somewhere to try this out. If I had tried to debug this by jumping in my car and having someone drive me around, that would have been a major bottleneck in the development process. So I'm really glad that's there. The third one is the editor location array. And again, this one is mostly used for debugging and development. It allows us to provide a list of predetermined points that we're working with. And the transform is actually a super cool one. Basically, it provides a location based on the transforms position in another object. So for example, if I wanted to have a pet that followed the player around, then I could use the transform location provider to have it follow our character around the map. And that's really all there is to the location providers. It's not terribly complicated. They're super easy to use and really, really helpful. So let's get back to our player. Now, first thing you might notice, based on the camera's position, the player's a little large. So let's see how it stacks up against the actual map. So we'll just click play there. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to see just how big our player is. OK. Yeah, the player's maybe a little large for the map. So let's maybe cut the scale in half and see where that puts us. So we'll go with x of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 5. Oh, yeah, that looks terrible. <laughs> and 0.5. Yeah, that's maybe a little better. Okay, cool. So we'll just remember that we need to change that when we're out of play mode. 
and that way the changes persist. The next problem we've got is our camera. It's, it's really not in a great place. So let's go ahead and play around with that and figure out where it needs to be. So I'm going to push it back on the z-axis just a little bit. So let's try raising the camera a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate this, I think, maybe on the x-axis. Yeah. To kind of give us a top-down view. Yeah. And then we'll raise this some more. That's getting a lot better. So let's try, let's try 50 for the y. And negative 35-ish for the z. Yeah, that works great. And then rotation, we'll just go with 55. Perfect. That's looking pretty good. So I think we'll stick with those numbers. So we just need to remember that as well. So we've got our coordinates. Let's, let's handle the harder ones to remember first. So I'm going to go ahead and cut play and change this to 50, negative 35. And I don't even remember what the Y was. Hmm. So we're going to press play again because apparently I have the memory of a squirrel. Maybe, was it 40 or 45? Well, either way, 45 looks good. That's what we're going to go with. So let's change this to 45. And believe it or not, as far as modeling our player out and giving it a position on the world, we're done. That, that was it. Our camera is now going to follow our player, and the player is going to use the location provider to always be in the center and have the map built around it. And if you want some proof of that, we can provide it real quick. We're going to go ahead and press play. And I'm going to come here into the location provider and into the editor location provider. And I'm going to change this 37.784179 to 37. Point, let's go with like 65. Sure, that's good. And one of the cool things here is our player's position actually changed. It didn't just render the map fresh around the player and keep it at 0, 0, 0. The player itself is now in a completely different position, which is great because if we've generated any, say, enemies or items or anything like that, it'll actually keep them where they're supposed to be in the world. And that stuff will persist, but the map data won't be hanging out there. So again, another huge optimization for Mapbox, and I think it's really cool. So let's go ahead and stop running this. And then we've just got one more piece of business to finish up the player. We need to add a script. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come into the player object here. And I'm going to right click and create a new folder. And I'm going to call it scripts. And then I'm going to right click again and create a new C sharp script inside of it. And I'm just going to call this player. And then we're going to click on our player and add this script to it. Right now it's just an empty script, but we are about to change that. So I'm going to double click and go into my IDE. And to start with our player class, we're going to need a few variables. So let's go ahead and set those up. Let's go ahead and set up a serialized field of private int XP. And we're going to set that by default to zero. And then we'll get another serialized, oop, not the right one, serialized field, private int required XP. And we're going to set that to 100. And we're going to set that to, let's just go with 100 as a default. And then we'll need, again, another serialized field for private int level base. We're going to set that to 100. And then one more serialized field. And that's going to be a private list of type game object. And we're going to call that droids. And we're going to make a new list of type game object. We got that extra parenthesis half. And then the last variable that we're going to need is going to be the private int level. And we're going to set that to 1 as a default. And there we go. That's all the variables we need. So let's go ahead and set some getters for these. So we'll start with capital XP. And then required XP. And then level base. 
and then droids to get our droids. And then we'll need just a couple of functions to manipulate our data, and we're not going to need to update, so let's just get rid of that. We're going to need a public facing function called void add xp. And it's going to take a variable of type integer, and we'll just call that xp. And for the sake of defensive programming, we're going to use a math function, math max of 0 and xp. And we're also going to want to specify this.xp. And then we'll need a function for adding our droids. Actually, let me update this so the capital. Okay. Match conventions. And this is going to accept a game object. And we're going to call that droid. And then droids.add droid. And there we go. Then we need one last function, and it's going to be called private void init level data. It won't take any parameters, but what this is going to do for us is set up our level and experience. So first we're going to set the level, and that's going to be equal to xp divided by the level base plus 1, so that the minimum level is 1. And then required XP is going to equal level base times level. That's it. Now you could use a much more complicated level system if you want, but for the purposes of this section, that's that's all we need. The last thing we need to do here is we need to go into our start function and say init level data. And there we go. So let's go ahead and save that. And we'll head on back to Unity. And we're going to go ahead and call this video good. Um, our player is set up and ready to go. It uses the location provider correctly. It's got all the scripts it needs to get started up. So we're in pretty good shape to get moving on. Let's go ahead and update our repo. So added player object. Go ahead and say publish now. And yeah, I want to save. We're up to date and good to go. So in this video, we've covered setting up our player prefab and the uses of these different location providers, um, all four of them. So the device provider, the editor provider, the editor location array provider, the transform, and we've successfully swapped out the placeholder player object Mapbox provides for us with a fully featured and functional player object. Great job following along. This is Ben with devslopes.com and we will see you next time.